this video, we're going to be talking about our first convergence test, and that is the geometric series test. So the geometric series test applies in particular to series that are geometric series, which means they follow this particular form where your first term could be some number a, but to get to the next term, you're always multiplying by the same number r, and r is called the common ratio. Okay, so to get to the next term, you're always multiplying by r, then you have a geometric series. Okay, and where this series converges or diverges is connected to where the geometric sequence converged and diverged. Okay, so without going through quite the full proof, it does turn out that our Sn, our nth partial sum, for our geometric series would be equal to a times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Okay, so remember r to the n was um, the form of a geometric sequence. So recall that when we introduced the geometric sequence, the limit as n goes to infinity of r to the n was equal to 0, where r is between negative 1 and 1, and 1 if r equaled 1, and diverged otherwise. Okay, so if we think about having to find where this um, geometric series would converge or diverge, it would have to do with taking the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn. Okay, so the only thing in here that depends on n is that r to the n. And so we see that r to the n is going to be going to 0 for r between negative 1 and 1. And another way of saying that is that the absolute value of r is less than 1. So this is going to be exactly where our um, geometric series converges. Converges if that common ratio and absolute value is less than 1. Okay. Now we know this limit goes to 1 if r equals 1. Notice that would make me have a 0 denominator in, in this case. Well that's because we've excluded the r equals 1 case because if you think about just doing a sum of 1's from n equals 1 to infinity, doing 1 plus 1 plus 1, clearly that's going to diverge. Okay, and we know that r to the n will diverge for all values um, bigger than 1 and smaller than negative 1, so we're going to have our geometric series diverge if the absolute value of r is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, so if we can identify something as geometric, figure out what r is, we can determine if it converges or diverges based on these rules. We also know that if it converges, the sum will be equal to, well if rn is going to be going to 0, that means that the limit as n goes to infinity of sn would be a over 1 minus r. Okay, so our sum would equal a over 1 minus r. Okay, so one other way to remember that um, form is that it's the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So let me just give myself a little more room to write this. Okay, converges if absolute value of r is less than 1 with a sum equal to a over 1 minus r. In other words, the first term divided by 1 minus whatever that common ratio is. Okay, so we're going to go through and see a couple of examples of geometric series and applying this particular convergence test. Okay, so first one, one that we've seen before, but we've, we've talked about um, the value of the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 2 to the n using some geometry, and we've looked at it using the, the definition of convergence. Now we're going to apply the geometric series test. So again, notice that this is 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth, etc. Okay. This is geometric because I'm multiplying each term by one half to get to the next term. I see that my first term is a half, so this is geometric with parameters a equals one half for the first term and common ratio equals one half because I'm multiplying each term by a half to get to the next one. Okay, so to apply my um, geometric series test, we can say that since the absolute value of r 
equals one half, which is indeed less than one, okay? This series that we're given here, the sum of one over two to the n, converges by the geometric series test. Okay, you'll see us abbreviate that test by GST. Okay, so this is our concluding statement. We had to specifically state what R was and state that R in absolute value is less than one because that was the condition of the test. And then we can also say that its sum is equal to A over one minus R which is one half over one minus a half. So we have one half over a half, which is one, okay, which agrees with the other methods that we used on this problem as well. But this would now be the standard um, approach you would use for determining convergence or divergence of this series, and then um, in this case showing the series converges and showing that its sum is one. Okay, so let's look at another example. One of the um, other examples that we had looked at to start with was this particular series of adding 0.3 plus 0.03 plus 0.003 plus 0.0003. So now we want to see how we can apply the um, geometric series to this and see how it is in fact a geometric series. So notice that this series is geometric with a equals 0 0.3 and r equals what? Well, what am I doing to each term to get to the next term? Looks like I'm moving the decimal point to the left one. So what is it that moves the decimal point to the left? Um, that's dividing by 10 or multiplying by 1 tenth. So our r here is 1 tenth. Okay. So we can say that since the absolute value of r equals 1 tenth is less than 1, okay, specifically having to I can't just say r is one tenth. I have to specifically note it's less than one because we'll have other tests where maybe you have to compare some value to some other number. So I want to specifically note what's important about that is that it's less than one. So we're saying since that's less than one, the series converges by the geometric series test. Okay. Noting in terms of work that we need, we always are going to say what our conclusion is, what test we're using, and why. Okay, In this case, because it converges, we can also find the sum. So we can say its sum is equal to a over 1 minus r. Okay, Reminding ourselves what the formula is, which is equal to um, 0.3 divided by 1 minus 1 tenth, okay? Or I can convert 0.3 to a fraction. I say that's 3 over 10 divided by um, 1 minus 1 tenth, which would be 9 tenths. Okay, that's 3 tenths times 10 over 9, which we see simplifies to 1 third, which is what we knew the value of that to be, but now we've shown it using our geometric series test. Okay, that's the 0.3 repeating decimal, which is equal to 1 third. So what about the following example? So here I have 3 minus 4 plus 16 over 3 minus 64 over 9, etc. So we want to try to identify um, why this series is geometric. Maybe it's hard to see with the first couple of terms, but I see with 16 over 3 to 64 over 9, looks like I'm multiplying the denominator by 3 and the numerator by um, negative 4 since the, the sign here is, is, is um, flipping. So this looks like it's geometric with the first term equal to 3 and common ratio equal to negative 4 thirds. Okay, so let's check that. See that 3 times negative 4 thirds will give us negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 thirds will give us 16 over 3. 16 over 3 times negative 4 thirds will give us negative 64 over 9. So that does work. One other way we could have gone about finding the common ratio, if you think something is ge geometric, is just to, to go backwards instead of trying to look at the problem as 16 over 3 times question mark equals negative 64 over 9. I could do 64 over 9 divided by 16 thirds, and whatever I get out of that, if it works 
um, for every single term would be my common ratio. So notice that this is negative 64 over 9 times 3 over 16. Okay, so divide by 3 here, divide by 3, divide by 4. Um, or let's see, I could say divide 16 by 16. Here, this is 1, okay, this is 4, and see how I get negative 4 thirds that way. Okay, so that's another way to do it. If you think something's geometric, take the next term and divide it by the previous term. Um, okay, so we've got our a equals 3, or our a equals negative 4 thirds, and now I can say that since the absolute value of r, okay, is equal to the absolute value of negative 4 thirds, which equals positive 4 thirds. Now is that bigger or smaller than 1? Well, 4 thirds is definitely bigger than 1, okay? So the series diverges by the geometric series test. So I'm not going to go on to find the sum because I've just shown that it's a divergent series. Okay, so one more example. So notice that the first, uh, let's see, our first one was expressed in series notation with n equals 1 to infinity, then we had two just written out with the first couple of terms. Okay, now I have another one expressed with some notation, but it's a little more going on than our first one. So whenever you see something like this, if it's a number raised to the n, okay, over some other number to the n, something like this, um, it's probably geometric. Okay, a number raised to the n power. But to figure out what that um, a is and what that um, common ratio is, it's a good idea to write out the first couple of terms. So plug in n equals 1. So I'm going to have negative 3 to the 0 over 4, plus what happens when I plug in 2. That'll be negative 3 to the first power over 4 squared. Okay, let's just go to the third term here. Plug in n equals 3. This will be negative 3 squared over 4 cubed, etc. Okay, so I can turn this into a version where I have first couple of terms written out. So notice that that would be 1 fourth plus negative 3 over 16 plus 9 over 64, etc. Or it might even be helpful in this case to leave these denominators as just those powers of 4, 4 squared and 4 cubed. Okay. So we can see that this is geometric with a equals 1 fourth and r equals, that looks like I'm multiplying by negative 3 fourths to get to the next term. Okay, 1 fourth times negative 3 fourths is negative 3 over 4 squared. Multiply that times negative 3 fourths, I get the positive 9 over 4 cubed. So that seems to work out as my common ratio. So now we can say that since the absolute value of r equals the absolute value of negative 3 fourths equals 3 fourths is less than 1. Oops. So this is less than 1. Okay. This series converges by the geometric series test. Okay. So we can say, so its sum is a over 1 minus r, which is equal to 1 fourth over 1 minus, now here we want to be careful, I do have r is negative, so I'm going to have 1 minus negative 3 fourths, so I'll end up with plus a positive, so this will end up being 1 fourth divided by, let's see, this will be 4 over 4 plus 3 over 4, so divided by 7 fourths, so it looks like I'll get a sum of 1 over 7. Okay, so the geometric series is really nice to apply once you've identified um, that you do have a geometric series and you can identify what your first term is and what your common ratio is.